It's time for Tech Talk number 16. But we got lots to talk about tonight. We've got stuff on some microphone stuff and other things and your questions bass of course. traps not bass traps. not bass traps you know. <laughs> yeah you, you might want to you're not going to want a bass tournament but you might want a bass tournament <laughs> right we'll talk about all of that and more uh tonight on tech talk and we definitely want your questions please 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 put them in the chat room for us tonight we love having them i'm sure you have plenty of them so stay tuned voiceover body shop tech talk coming up right now from the outer reaches, they came, bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Hey there, wherever you are. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Woodham. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO. BS yes. Tech Talk. Yes. yes. Well, boy, a ton of stuff to talk about today. Uh, and we appreciate your questions. If you're watching the show live, throw them in the chat room mm -hmm. and we'll be happy to answer them because we know the answers. We may have varying opinions, but one way or another, you're going to get the right answer. Yeah. So, uh, it's but way it's way better than Google. Yeah. I'll tell you that right now. Been an interesting week here at the VoiceOver Body Shop. You know, dealing with people's studios and lots of other stuff. Also, I need to make a little announcement. Yeah. Uh, if anybody wants help with their auditions, mm -hmm. I will soon be offering audition direction for a small fee. Cool. But you got to audition for me. I'm not just, you know, I don't want just everybody saying, well, you can help. You know, I'm, I want people who really know what they're doing mm -hmm. because directing is fun stuff. But it's vital, especially because self-direction is so hard. Very hard. So even uh, our guest last week, Eliza, was asking Ella for notes right. on her audition. Right. Because getting another person's opinion sometimes is helpful. That's right. Now Ella's ten, but she was doing a character voice of you know for a kid's show. Right. So she asked an authority. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So if you get the yes, hand, there's, Ella, there's we know you're here. Ella's hand there. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so uh, you know, email me and uh, we can discuss that. I'll be happy to because uh, di audition directions are. It, it's like what is who's the character? What's going on? Good idea. Anyway, we got lots to talk about tonight, and uh, so what do you got in your update? Well, I, you know, I just I, I I think of things that have come up lately, and one of them is um, playing around with your mic pickup patterns. Oh yes. So, you know, we talk a lot about mics If you have that, a variable mic. Yeah, we talk a lot about, a lot of the mics that we talk about on the show are definitely simpler, single capsule, single pattern microphones. Right. Your VO1A, your AT2030, 20, 20, 20, 20, 35. All of these mics are single pattern mics. But if you happen to have a mic with more than one pickup pattern, which some of you may, you may have a... Uh, well, I would say a U87 is the first one that comes to mind. That's, of course, a $3,000 mic. 
but there are a lot of less expensive mics that have multiple patterns. And one thing you can try with these mics, instead of using the usual cardioid pickup, is try using a figure eight pattern. Now, what does that do? That makes the microphone behave really pretty differently. Yeah. So with cardioid, you know, it's picking up mostly what's in front and not so much of what's behind. With figure eight, it's picking up what's in front in a smaller sweet spot, what's in back also in the exact same pattern in the back. That's not what's interesting about it for a single voice. What's interesting is that it doesn't pick up anything around the middle, tops, mm -hmm. sides, and bottom. Right. Why is that useful? If you're using your mic in a really small booth, a really small space, and you've got a big piece of glass right next to you or something like that, if you put that mic in, fig mic in figure eight, now that big reflective thing that's making you know it sound like you're in a box. It's in a null zone. Is yeah, it's tuned out. Yeah, and so you're and you're not so usually worried about the back. The back of the mic in any good booth is going to be a dead. It's facing a dead wall. Right. So that side of the mic is not picking up much of anything. It shouldn't be. Um, what also has happens is it gets a bigger, um, more pronounced proximity effect. Hmm. Have you ever noticed? Have you had a chance to play around much? I mean, a lot of the mics we have here are not. Multi pattern. Right. If I'm playing pattern. with my ribbon mics, which are definitely mics. which are definitely figure eight. Almost always are figure eight. Yeah, that's right. And perfect, perfect figure eights, in fact. Yes. And yeah, yeah. So those they're they're fun to play with, but you know using a figure eight may give your voice more depth because sometimes I think people tend to use proximity effect too much. Right. The mic and, will reach further. Right. Right, because the proximity effect is sort of extended yeah. out from the mic. So if you have it in figure eight, you don't want to work it so close. You can afford to have the mic further away and some, sometimes. Right. And if you see pictures, say from the 30s or 40s, where they were using uh, ribbon mics in a big studio, it's way up here like this one it is here. Pretty high sometimes. Yeah. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and, but it, it sounds like the distance between somebody you're actually talking to, which is what the effect that you're going for. Mm -hmm. And I, I tend to think that a lot of people overlook that when they're doing their voiceover work. Is they're like I'm concentrating on the mic, and I try to forget that the mic is there. Yeah. And so if you just happen to have a mic with more than one pickup pattern, give it a shot. Try, try it. figure eight. Um, all of you with those mics will also have Omni. Usually not nearly as useful for voiceover. It gets rid of all proximity effect, and now makes the mic sensitive to everything in the room, which is generally bad. Yeah. <laughs> That's Unless you get a, a really good room. Unless you have a really good room. Yeah. So there you go. Figure eights. Another thing about acoustics and sound in your studio is bass traps. And somebody actually asked on one of the forums about bass traps, saying, asking basically, if I put bass traps in my booth, can I save money on my booth's soundproofing? So in other words, the thought being that, well, it traps bass, so if I put them in my booth, won't it trap the noise from coming from the outside? No. That's not what a bass trap does. It sounds confusing, um, but it, a bass trap is designed to control the low frequency that's inside the booth, that's coming from your own voice. That's what a bass trap is doing. And in voiceover, we're using them often into the mid-range. Right. Let's, let's, let's say we're, we're not trying to stop a bass guitar from resonating really low 80 hertz stuff. We're trying to control that low, low to mid-range and bass traps, most of the ones you guys are going to find, like the RLX foam ones, do a really good job in that critical 100 hertz to 120 hertz range. Um, but that's basically what we're talking about with the bass trap. Right. It's not going to stop bass from inside, from the outside coming in. Right. No. And 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 the thing is, is you have to you have to understand what it is you're listening to. If you have that sound of like you sound like you're in a booth, uh, where you get these standing waves and Pe it, sounds, it doesn't sound yeah. focused. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds a little boothy. Yeah, that's and boothy, and what bass traps boothy. do is they essentially you know because we're dealing with a lot of ninety degree angles, mm -hmm. and what the bass traps do is they prevent the sound from bouncing off yeah. those 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 acute angles. Corner bass traps, right. the ones that we shove up in the corners, and, right. in the corners. Yeah, I mean you'll find them in bigger recording studios that are like freestanding and stuff like that, or and, sometimes they're hidden in the ceiling. Right, and 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 what are they for to prevent? you know, those, those standing waves from really building up and, but in a, in a small booth, they can be very critical because Super as we know, critical. small recording booths were not really designed originally as recording booths. They, 
Yeah. While they keep sound from coming in, their primary function was to keep sound from coming out so right. somebody could practice their trumpet or saxophone or... Yeah, they weren't supposed you know. to sound good, per se. They were right. just supposed to trap the sound instead. Right. So we're trying to make these little boxes sound good, and bass traps almost always helps. So trust us on that. Yeah. Um, another thing is... Um, it's just been, you know, these are things that that come up on forums that make me right. think gear failure. I, I would love, I want to create like an awesome, a massive database of uh, gear that people are using that has failed on them. Mm -hmm. um, and so I want, and what I basically, I'm, I'm going to crowdsource this a little bit. I'd love to have your uh, input, you folks out there watching and listening to the show, as to what's the best tool for doing this. Is it a survey thing like SurveyMonkey? Is it a Google Doc? Is what what would be the great way to, to the best way to gather this information? Because I basically want to be able to start building this thing and have it be available to everyone, right? To can to then go ahead and look at and say, oh wow, I didn't realize this particular product has been failing for a lot of people. Maybe right. I should avoid it. Right? Might be good to let the manufacturers know that what's going on. Yeah, There's I mean they may. Well, any legit good manufacturer, they would probably like to have this data. Right. They'd want to know what products that are out there are that people are having trouble with. Yeah. I mean, most of these things are they're solid state. They really shouldn't fail. I mean, what yeah. are some things that fail on these things? You know, usually power supplies, power supplies, uh, sure. switches and dials, switches and buttons. Yeah. But things that move. Right. Buttons and switches fail. Uh, uh, plug, plugs where you, you know, if you're connectors. connectors where you plug your headphones in, yeah. you walk away, tears that. Yeah. It broke a really nice USB unit. USB ports. Yeah. yeah. Anything with mechanical connections fail. But when it's something mysterious inside the box, that's the stuff I'm most concerned about. I mean, I'm, whatever can fail, I want to know. But that those things that are like mysterious failures. I just had to throw it away kind of thing. That's, yeah. that's stuff I'm really interested in. How, how many failures do you think are really caused by firmware more than hmm. perhaps the actual physical structure of, of a device? Because we know, know interfaces, there are certain interfaces we keep hearing reports of, well, this isn't working. Yeah, not, mine's not working either. It's like, is it a design flaw? Is it a firmware design flaw? Is it an update to another piece of software mm -hmm. that's making it not interact properly? So it may not actually be defective. That's something I should put in the in that survey. Like, uh, it's not just what is it that you had that failed, but right. what is it that you had that you failed, and what was what did you do at the time when it failed? Did you just walk away? Did you install something? What caused that thing to stop working for you? So yeah, if it is a firmware update, we'll know. Yeah. Um, I haven't had a lot of clients tell me, I did a firmware update and my thing is dead now and I can't use it. That's been pretty unusual lately. Yeah. In the old days, that was a bigger problem. Right. But but if it's, say, an, an OS update, yeah, that seems to be driving a lot of people nuts. Yeah, some things just stop working because they literally will not work on your system anymore. Right. That's another kind of failure, too. So there's multiple ways things can fail. Yeah. Um, so I'm, anyway, I'm curious about that. If you have ideas, send an email to the guys at VOBS TV. Tell us, I got an idea on how to do this. We would really, really appreciate it. Um, let me ask one more thing is about, um, this is just general information. Okay. I'm really curious how many people out there would actually dedicate an entire suitcase, right? Roll, not, not like a carry on, but a whole suitcase you have to check and probably pay baggage for to a voiceover booth, like hmm. for your, for your studio that you would take with you on traveling and going to hotel. How many of you would dedicate that much of your <laughs> like, luggage like, to something much larger than this? <laughs> Do you think that's something that's int of interest to you? I'm curious. I definitely would love to know. I mean, send an email to, you can send an email to the guys or, uh, and, and let us know how many people like that. That sounds interesting. I'm yeah. just curious. See, now I, see, I find traveling with your voiceover gear to be, and I, and I've been, I've come to this conclusion after many years of doing this. Unless you really have a pair of golden handcuffs right. and you are Small making money of you out there that do. Yeah. If you're really making money and you have to be, you know, update things overnight or something like that. Or in one hour. Right. <laughs> Auditioning shouldn't be about the quality of your audio so much as it is the quality of your read. If somebody there, remember, most of these guys are listening to these auditions, you know, on their phones. Right. Or their laptops or something like that. If you record properly using your phone and your phone only in your car, 
using it so you're not, you know, using, you're not talking directly into the mic and you're using the right, you know, pro- and the rules good apply. Mic technique still rules. Yeah. Exactly. Good mic technique still applies to an iPhone mic. Right. Me. Exactly. If you use it right in your car or in a closet full of clothes or something like that, it, if you're, it's all about the performance. Mm-hmm. And while it's not going to sound the same as your home studio, if you grab their attention with the way you read it and it's the audio is acceptable, that's all you really need. So do you need to dedicate a suitcase? I used not to. Not auditioning. No way. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, if, you're, if you have to finish a project, you can't finish something on the road that you started in your own studio because it's going to sound completely different. So would you? I don't know. I, I guess if you're you're into the technology of actually being able to do that, yeah, you would do that. But is it necessary? But that's just my perspective as a voice actor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll be curious who, to find who gets out. around. So the rest of this show is dedicated to you. Your guys. questions, absolutely. We got a bunch coming in, but we'd love to have more. So send them in right away. All right, and we'll get to those questions here on Voiceover Body Shop Tech Talk right after these incredibly important announcements. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hey there, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and I'm very excited, very happy to announce that as of today, vo to gos sponsorship with uh, VoiceOver Body Shop is over. Long-standing relationship, bye-bye, vo to go go And the reason I'm happy and excited about it is that we're about to embark on a brand new sponsorship arrangement with VoiceOver Body Shop with the new name of our website and our company. The name is now voheroes.com. And there's a big reason for that. I think that VoiceOver Body Shop and our company share a mission. And that mission is not just to teach you how to do voiceover really well, but to really help you become heroes to your clients. Your clients don't come to you just to do voiceover. Your clients come to you to help them, to save them, to help them sell products and services, to help them explain their company, to help them narrate their audiobook. There's a million reasons why they come to you, and it's all about making their lives spectacular. And that's what we're going to do at voheroes.com. The new website is up. I'd love to show it to you. voheroes.com front page is basically a very modern, clean look that tells you everything you need to succeed. It helps you meet our coaches. Uh, what we do in three simple steps, we let you figure out if VO Heroes is right for you. We think it usually is if you're watching this show. Um, we have the same classes, but they've been heroically updated for VOHeroes.com. And again, the look and feel is fantastic. And the big thing that we wanted to do is we wanted to get off Facebook. 
because people have been telling us we don't want to be on Facebook. So now ProConnect, which is our discussion group, is on VOHeroes.com. When you want to talk about things with your, uh, your, your fellow pros in the VO Heroes curriculum, uh, you'll be able to do it right on the site. Log in, get all of the stuff that you want, the workouts, the classes, the discussion, uh, the labs, the recordings, everything right there on one site, clean, awesome, lovely, and I'm very excited about our future. Now, in a couple of weeks, we're going to be launching officially with a great package, great price, lots of great bonuses. Stand by for that. You'll hear about it on VoiceOver Body Shop. In the meantime, stand by for more VOBS. I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, from VOHeroes.com. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. We'll be seeing Mr. Lawrence again soon. We should be, shouldn't we? We should be. You know. All right. Just got a lot of them there, too. Anyway, so we love getting your questions. Uh, but first, we got to tell you what George and I do. Perhaps this is one of the first times you've watched this show. Could be. Because, or listened. Or listened to this show. And you got to understand that George and I, you know, there's a lot of guys that talk about home voiceover studios and what works for them. Right. But what about... For you, every voice, every, every room is different. Every yeah. voice is different. Everything is different. Every time you, you, you need to set up a home studio, it's a unique custom situation that has to work for you and not just right. your voice, but your lifestyle, you know, how you, you know, what, the, what room you're going to put it in. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Why do you pick what room to do it in? Well, there's really only two guys that really have been doing this longer than anybody else. And that's Mr. Whittem and myself. And we don't say it because we figure, well, we're just great at what we do. We love what we do. It's our yeah. passion. It's, uh, it's been a, quite a focus, I'd have to say, for the last 10 plus years. It, it, for it's, sure. it's a niche in the world of niches. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but if you really need help learning about how to build a home studio or you want to build a voiceover palace, we'll be happy to help. Um, Get a hold of us. And if you want to talk to George about the stuff that he does, because he does it full time, go over to George the dot tech or George the tech dot com. They both work. Um, there's ways to book me on there real time for a, a consultation over the phone. I do actually make house calls as well when I'm in your area right now, mainly Los Angeles, obviously, but I am going to be at the end of next month in uh, Montreal and Toronto. And then uh, South Florida. So I'm going to be on the road a little bit, then Portland, then Seattle the week after that. So I'm getting around. And so if you're wondering if I'm going to come to your area, let me let me know uh, that you're interested. And uh, Dan, how about yourself? Well, Where you can find you. You can find me over at homevoiceoverstudio.com, uh, where I explain how I do what I do. I love working one on one with people. Me too. Yeah. Uh, you know, where it's, you know, again, if you're in LA, I love making house calls. I actually bring a wrench with me, you know, just like I'm a plumber. No, I don't really do that. I bring a <laughs> tiny little toolkit. Like <laughs> I, I've got some of those too, you know, <laughs> you know, but it's fun. Like, like, you know, sniffing around people's homes and saying, this might work. Well, this is the place to do this. Right. Because people don't necessarily know what to listen it's for. Not obvious. Or, or, yeah. To us, it's obvious because we, we've done it for so many years and we mm. know what what's going to work best we'll save you a ton of time and a money. ton of bad advice online oh god a lot of misdirection and confusion yeah. that's what we're going to save you trust us we're going to get to the point so uh check us out and you know if you go to my website you can also click on the uh specimen collection cup if you've already got a studio let's hear what it sounds like and uh we can go from there mm -hmm. so you know, and you offer that that service as well. Get a sound check. Yeah. Yes. So let's get into all the fabulous questions from our fabulous audience. All right, there. let's plow through. There's a lot of them. So first one's from Rosie Goodman. Yeah. Um, I believe I've worked with Rosie over the years a couple of times. Yep. Uh, I understand Biodynamic DT770 Pro headphones uh, represents a fantastic set of headphones. However, for those of us on a basic beer budget, not champagne budget, I'm seeking advice. I'm sure you can suggest a less expensive set for catching those extra little sounds during the editing process. Um, all right. Well, right now I'm not going to plug anything in particular because I don't 
the the world of inexpensive headphones that sound pretty damn good is insane. There 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 are gajillions of them. Thanks to the iPod world and iPhone and mobile listening. Mm -hmm. There's a million of headphones out there that not necessarily are designed for studio use, but still have some really good sound quality. Um, and so I would recommend starting out doing a little bit of research online. Um, if you're looking for sub, I don't know, $50, mm. there, there are definitely a lot of options. Yeah. I will name a few models that are in the professional realm, though. Right. Anything from Audio-Technica, starting with the ATH M20 and up, M20, M30, 40, 50, all of them are, are really good. The 20s are not quite as good as the 40s, but the 40s are just about as good as the 50s. And as you go up from there, the, they just get more fancy materials, right. higher quality builds. But the sound quality doesn't really change dramatically as you go up in price. Right. I'm not a big headphone user. Yeah. You know, I would use earbuds if I want to listen to music at night. Right. But, you know, in the studio, I use studio monitors. If you're doing a session where, you know, you can't have the monitors on, I'll use headphones. Mm-hmm. But I can hear in just about anything. What really is the difference between these models that people would listen for? It's like, well, this sounds good to me, but is that the right sound? And oh, they, man. Headphones are, they're so much, they're so subjective. They're, they're, they're like mics, but nothing like mics. Like I can put the same mic up on 20 different people right. and get it and, and, and be okay. But if I put that same pair of headphones on 20 different people's heads, Seven of them are going to say they hurt my ears. Five say they're going to they're too bright. Some say they're too dark. Headphones are super super personalized, yeah. and um, the price that you pay for the headphones these days doesn't really mean a whole heck of a lot as to how you think they're going to sound. Right. I think most important is how they feel. Right. That you can if if you're going to be editing in headphones, you got you're going to be wearing them a lot. Yeah. Um, so if you're buying headphones for voiceover acting because you have to wear them for whatever reason maybe you're getting a lot of direction then get something that's a closed ear headphone um our friend uh booth junkie uh mike Doug audio just did a couple good youtube videos about this about types of headphones and why he does wear them in the booths he actually did one about that yeah um but yeah you don't have to spend a lot but you can do a little google little amazon searching a little reviewed reading and right things like that and find some good bargains out there. Yeah. But uh, Audio-Technica, Sennheiser, AKG, those three have been making headphones for a very long time. None of them make anything that's in the junk category and some under $50. Right. And, and what Rosie was asking is like, it's to hear those little subtle clicks and things that you're going to hear that with just about any headphone. Pretty much. You know, there's, I mean, unless you're using a pair of crystal set headphones, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're, yeah. you're going to, you're going to hear those little subtle things especially if they're sealed over the ear headphones like these are the harlan hogan vo headphones right and they're sealed i mean you hear everything sometimes to your detriment i won't get into that you don't drive while actually we actually just did, we, did, <laughs> we just did an episode of um pro audio suite yeah about being picky yeah we just talked about when are you being too picky right. as a voiceover actor or a producer right and part of that had to do with headphones because they they magnify every darn little sound and you go crazy trying to fix it all. Yeah. So, so important points to, to consider. Oof, what a, what a rant on that one. We got yeah. a lot more to get through here. Absolutely. Um, next on the list. So something about cloud lifters, actually a friend of Susan, our producer had asked about cloud lifters. What, um, she, he, she said that somebody recommended a cloud lifter to solve a problem that was completely wrong about what this thing does. So, right. so a cloud lifter, the, the Roger Cloud had developed cloud microphones. Great guy, by uh, the way. Invented this cloud lifter thing. It's been knocked off by many companies. There's many products out there. They're all going to be generically called cloud lifters now, thanks to Roger Cloud. But what they do is they just basically boost the level of a dynamic or a ribbon microphone. Um, they do it by taking phantom power in and then using a very simple circuit on the inside, boost that signal. Uh, theoretically, without creating any additional noise or uh any coloration to the sound it just it's a very simple electronic circuit that raises the level um so these things work generally with dynamics and ribbon mics right. because they don't pass phantom power um so what they do is they take your dynamic mic or ribbon mic that's not very low output 
it's very not sensitive and makes it sensitive. Right. So now if you add one of these to a studio that has a lot of background noise from computers, fans, air conditioning, what's going to happen? Yeah, all that stuff's going to get a lot louder now because you just added 20 to 25 dB of sensitivity to said microphone. Yeah, It's not so, a filter, it's no. an amplifier. It just makes the mic louder. Period. Nothing. It's, it's, it's all it does. So if you get one of these and you're trying to make your studio quieter, it's not necessarily going to fix it. What it can do is if you're using a really cheap interface with one of these dynamic mics and you have the gain pegged all the way as loud it can go and there's a lot of hiss, um, what these can do is get you end up with less hiss mm. sometimes. Right. So you're able to run your preamp at a much lower amount of gain and sometimes they end up sounding cleaner. So yeah. that noise level will drop. Right. They're fun to use. I, you know, I've got my collection of ribbon mics and ones I've built and stuff. Yeah, you've got to have good output on them. And, you know, the cloud lifters, which was, it was really it was designed for that, for ribbon mics because ribbon mics, you know, they went out of, they went out of style in the, in the fifties and, and sixties. And, uh, but they were brought back because they had that nice warm analog sound to them. And a lot of guitarists and recording engineers were like, let's bring them back because we can capture them more accurately using digital uh, audio. It's much easier and, to use these mics now with yeah. our current gear than it used to be. Yeah, because yeah. you used to have big preamps and, oh right. God, it's, no wonder audio sounded like garbage in the 30s. Yeah, it was tough to get good sound <laughs> with the gear we were using. Um, in terms of microphones, another option, so if you're looking for a mic that is a condenser mic that's very sensitive, but doesn't have that sort of a little bit bright sound to it that most condenser mics have nowadays. You want it to be a little smoother. Maybe your voice is a little bit bright. Maybe it's a female voice and it has a very bright curve to it. There is one microphone that I've recommended a few times and I found somebody mentioning this mic on Facebook, a guy named Scott F. Wynn, and that is the um, Shure KSM32. Um, it's, a, it's a nice mic for smoothing out what would sometimes sound harsh or sibilant on other microphones. Um, so that mic is a little bit different from the norm. Right. And the nice thing about it is it's not crazy expensive either. Right. I think it's in the four to $500 range. Which is in the upper range that we usually recommend yeah. people get. It's not crazy expensive. Um, but if you are looking for a mic, when people say, I'm looking for a mic for a female voice or something, I guess sigh, cause you know, we can put almost any mic on any voice and make it sound good, but Still, this mic will maybe complement some women's voices or just shrill, sharp-sounding microphone uh, uh, voices in male and men or sibilant voices uh, and smooth it out a little bit. Right. So, I mean, I'm generally of the opinion, and this is just from experience and being a voice actor, and like I've used different mics, and we've done mic shootouts here, and yeah. people say, "Oh, Dan sounds great on this," or "It sounds better on that one." Why is there a varying opinion about because everybody hears differently? Yeah. So my opinion is, is the mic you have is the mic you have. And Unless there's, if there's not something mechanically wrong with it. Right. It's going to pick you up as you exist Yeah. with maybe slight little different colorations. Little variations. But those are things that can be adjusted in post. By producers. By little, little tiny <laughs> tweaks. And people right. are like, all right, we're going to add more yeah. bass to the, you know. Yeah. Right. It's not like that. And I think, again, people overthink what, what these parameters are. Mm -hmm. And that it's not that critical. If you're sibilant, it may not be the mic. It may not even be the recording. It may be what you're listening to it. Oh, on. boy, that happens a lot. That yeah. happens a lot. Yeah, yeah. Or, or you're talking into the wrong side of the mic, which, <laughs> which, which we get a lot. Why does it sound so, uh, why does hollow it hollow and hollow and bottom turn, heavy? Turn the mic around. It's a one-sided <laughs> mic. Yeah, 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 we get that one a lot. Um, all right. Carl Gillette um, from VOBS.TV. Hello all, I have a tech question. My apologies if this has been covered. My current, everything's been covered, but yeah, we're happy yeah. to re-answer that. Uh, my current <laughs> processing chain consists of isotope mouth declick, some EQ, which is a high pass filter and a small notch at about 340 Hertz. That's sort of that nasally range. Mm -hmm. um, gentle compression and normalizing, but we'll be adding a gate to that. Why? Oof, let's talk about the gate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is the best order for processing chain, or are there always any always, 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 or never, never, never rules? Okay, if it depends on who you ask, many would say never, never, never process anything. But if you're trying to 
smooth out the sound that you're giving out for an audition, trying to correct for a room issue or something like that. Sequencing, this is the way I do it. Basically, I recommend if you're going to use a mouth declicker, do that while you're editing. So you're going to edit, you're going to declick, then edit, because you want to hear the result of the declicker while you're editing, because the right. declicker will screw stuff up. It will either remove something it should, it should not, like a T or right. a K, and you'll have a, e, a D or a T. You'll right. have a, a T will turn into a D. Is that right? Something like that. If, if the It'll, dialect calls for that. It takes fine, away the, but, you know, the sharp attack of words. Right. Um, or it will miss things that you want to remove. So you got to do that first. Then from there on, you know, sometimes I'll do normalization if I think the audio level needs to be corrected. Um, then I'll do a high-pass filter, compression. Um, now, gating. Um, if you're using gate as a generalized term, okay, I don't recommend gating because basically what a gate is is the sound will just disappear when you're not talking. Right. It's just like you've turned the mic on, off, on, off. Sounds really unnatural and unsmooth and sounds like you chopped the audio up while you're editing. If it's set wrong. If it's set wrong. There's, there's, there's ways that you can use a gate. An expander and, is really the more of the geekier term, but it's yeah. what we really want to talk about is an expander. What right. that does is when you're not speaking, the level of the background noise drops somewhat. Right. Doesn't go to total silence. So then I would have that in the chain. Then I used EQ to shape a little bit, a little bit brighter, a little darker, blah, blah, blah. And then lastly, I'll use a limiter. Um, and I'm using that mainly just to make the level back up. If I'm doing an audiobook, I'm using it to slam the meters to get these crazy numbers that audiobook producers want. Um, but generally, that's the sequence that I personally use them. Um, but this is there is no always, always, never, nevers at all in processing, ever. Right. It's completely dependent on the situation, the voice, the room, the mic, everything else. And there's really no one size fits all secret sauce to this. Oh, no. No. I mean, and, you know, I do I believe in processing if necessary. Mm -hmm. it, you know, if somebody sends me some audio and I'm like, well, you know, you could adjust this just a little bit or mm -hmm. something. Most of these changes, most of these processes are very, very minute changes. Because the, if you're you're trying to overemphasize something, one someone's going to notice it, mm -hmm. and you don't you don't want that. Uh, if by chance you're in a noisy place, you know. Again, we were talking about if you're throwing an audition out there and you're on the road and it's not your regular place, it's okay to try some of these things as long as they know that you're not in your regular studio. And don't try, don't try to fool them, right? <laughs> You know, don't don't think about this technology as the way that you're going to get voiceover work. The way you're going to get voiceover work is taking acting classes and improv classes and voice acting classes and learning how to be a good voice actor. Because the technology will take care of itself if you mm -hmm. keep to the basic rules that we teach people about right. you know mic technique and acoustics and and setting proper levels, which mm -hmm. <laughs> nobody seems to understand. <laughs> You know, but we, we try, that's why, that's why we're here on voiceover body shop to teach you what these things are about. And, uh, don't overthink this stuff. And, you know, cause that question, I, I cringe every time I see a question like that, because it's like, <laughs> I know, <laughs> like, uh, who have you been listening to? And like, well, you can use this. It, this makes me sound great. Well, you're not you and you don't hire you. Right. So that's, that's been coming up a lot more in conversation with my clients. You don't hire you. Right. So don't be saying that makes me sound great. Oh boy. Who, who cares yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if it doesn't sound great to somebody else, right. as we were saying before about microphones. Well, somebody thinks I sound great on that mic and then says, well, no, he sounds better on that. Well, that, mm -hmm. that creates the, the answer right there. Yeah. Next up, Jonathan Orara says, yes. what makes the universal audio interfaces so great for VO. Um, these are the Universal Audio Apollo. Right. Those kinds of yeah, things. The Aero. And, um, yeah. yeah. Um, are the virtual preamps worth that cost? Um, this kind of dovetails to what we were talking about. Yeah. The, the, you can get a fantastic sounding voiceover with a $100 mic preamp, like a Steinberg UR12, a Scarlett 2i Solo. A solo, solo yeah, thing. absolutely. You can get these really great sounding recordings with these tools. So what you're buying when you buy an Apollo or something like that, is a lot more complexity in terms of the signal routing, where things can go in and out of the computer from this app back to that app. You're also buying processing and you're buying mic preamp emulation. Um, 
that matters at a certain level. I think if you've been doing this a really long time and you're doing a lot of live direct reads, uh, live record, remote record reads like Source Connect and that sort of thing, then you are definitely um, sometimes, there's no, people buy them because they're really cool and I, <laughs> yeah, can, I, I get to, more they get to hire else. me to play around with their sound and that's all kind of fun. But the people that really need it are the ones doing very fast turnaround stuff. It's almost always affiliates, uh, promo, and things where they have to be very quick and and, and it's got to be around. right on the other end because they're doing it over ISDN. Yeah, it's being connection. captured on the end and the other end, and it's going. It, things are in a very rapid turnaround. That's where processing front end like that, recording right. through the processor into the computer, is really advan. It's an advantage at that time and or necessary sometimes. Yeah. But I don't know. Is it worth the upgrade? I have no idea. I cannot answer that question. I can't answer that question. All of this stuff, every last piece of gear that we talk about, except for a couple like the Harlan Hogan voice optimized uh, headphones or the VO1A or one of these, none of this stuff was designed for voiceover. It was all designed for producing music. Yeah. The Apollo series, the, the Universal Audio stuff, when we've been to their booth at NAM. And at at, mm -hmm. at at at, at uh, NAB, and I, it's like it's amazing what you can do with it. It is it's if really you cool are a musician or a or, or a producer or yeah. a sound designer, like our good friend Uncle Roy. You're not. You're in your closet, yeah. or you're in a booth, and you're you know in your living room or wherever it is that you do this. All of this stuff is not relevant to how good can you read copy because all the equipment in the world's not going to help you if you can't read your way out of a paper bag, mm -hmm. uh, which I'd like to see. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, it, it, most of this stuff, it's overkill for what you need. Now, again, if it's, is it cool? Yeah. Does it sound better than another interface? That's kind of objective. And like you were saying, you can get a really good recording. You know, mm -hmm. I use a very simple interface I hardly use any processing at all, if at all. When you listen, when you talk to the sales reps, you know they say the new Mark II version. Oh yeah, got to get that one. The old one, mm -hmm. the converters are so much better, and all this stuff. <sighs> that maybe matters if you're retracking seventy-five mics for an orchestra, and the detail from all the mics starts to accumulate. Nothing no. to the voiceover. Oh man, you don't you don't need to worry about that. Okay, moving on. We've ranted enough, I think, about that. He also had a question about headset mics that are good enough for voiceover, especially for audiobooks and long-form narration. Dan, at one time you were demoing some headset mics from DPA. DPA, yes. Dana, did you try recording any VO with them? Uh, I, you know, I tried a little bit. We used it on the show one night, and it sounded yeah. great on the show. It's a headset mic. Uh, you ha I think it's one of those things that you don't buy it because it'll be good for that. You use it because you know how to use it and what to use it for. Mm -hmm. Having it is not the same as the knowledge of how to, I mean, you, you buy a special kind of paintbrush when you're painting you, to do a very specific thing. Yeah. Uh, for audiobooks, you know, a good one will sound good, uh, but a bad one will sound like, that sounds like a headset mic. They can be, they can be thin yeah. and noisy. So yes. not lack, lacking a lot of low end richness and very uh not not clean right uh, unless you're spending i'm saying north of three or four hundred dollars yeah minimum yeah the dpas were really expensive eight boy they eight, were nine hundred dollars yeah. yeah but they were really built to do what what that is yeah and uh yes know. i mean the, the short answer is yes there are headset mics that i could say for sure would be usable for definitely audiobooks yeah. some voiceover work for sure um people that are doing um what do they call it? Mocap stuff. Yeah. It's or animation. It's not uncommon now for them to have a lavalier mic held onto their forehead with a sweatband. Right. And just or, taped or on the hood mouth. they're wearing. If yeah. There'll be a mic right here. Yeah. Um, that is that the sound quality is very good when used correctly. But uh, um, generally, they're just the ones that are good enough are still very expensive. Right. So unless you have a really good reason, probably not worth the investment. Yeah. And finally, a not question from our good buddy. Fred North <laughs> at Rhymes with Orange. He says, uh, you know, I take one week to a 10 day trips often. My income is largely from retainer clients, so I can't be off as much as I travel. If I know I have a walk-in closet where I'm going, I take my porta booth mic and interface. 
If not, I pack a suitcase with my PVC frame and moving blankets. It works very well for my business and travel habits. Mm -hmm. It works for Fred. But Fred knows how to use it. It's, I'm assuming it, he needs it. Yeah, because he, I, says, he, he, has, says retainer he has retainer clients. clients. So for him, it's a necessity. Um, he will actually he's, he will actually bring a suitcase. That's amazing. Right. I, I haven't seen anybody doing that yet, Fred. So that's really fascinating to to hear that. But for some people, they don't want to just they don't want to improvise when they get there. <laughs> they want to have something yeah. that they know is going to work. Yeah, but so. that, that's half the fun of doing it, though, is the <laughs> challenge of you know, where's the duvet? Shove it in the for some people. Here. That's fun, and for other people, it's, it's a nightmare. It's a pure nightmare. Yes. Yeah, so anyway. <laughs> Well, and Thank on you. that note, then thanks for that, Fred. We appreciate that. Um, one's slipping in under the wire. What, what, one, okay, we got time for one more. And I love the screen name, so let's make sure this is legit. Uh, the, yeah, it, which which means the E, the, yeah, okay, yeah. All right. It either well, means he's a, a proctologist or... So we have a proctologist who says, <laughs> hey, guys, how would you prioritize spending on equipment for a novice novice no kidding yeah uh, against the following uh, a mic sound treatment headphones and doll in other words if you're just starting and on a fixed budget where would you put your money first to last well uh, that's, acting a, that's a good question yeah so definitely okay. <laughs> let's let's say acting classes if you've got a th let's say you have three thousand dollars okay let's say some of you are starting with a thousand dollars 800 of that better go to classes and acting um sound treatment for sure like acoustics is absolutely way more important than the microphone the you're using sound of the room is yeah far more important that is definitely where you start with your money then you can get your microphone headphones not so necessary as we've said on the show before and daw well nowadays there are several options that are totally scot-free audacity um, ocean. ocean audio yeah. uh wave pad there's a couple of decent free ones they're, out there they're great ones and zeros are ones and zeros guys yeah they, they just they don't sound better than pro tools because it's just digital audio yeah. which is digital Capturing audio what comes off the interface and right so you know that's that there you go there's your prioritization of your budget so run with that and uh good luck yeah with absolutely. your uh rectal examinations <laughs> My friend. My mom wanted me to be a proctologist. Says a whole lot about my mom. <laughs> yeah, you can specialize in this. <laughs> anyway. Um, there we go. That, that's it. I think boy, that's, that's a lot of stuff. There's always we, we a riot it. talking with you about this <laughs> stuff. That's, we made it. Yeah, we did. All righty. Well, we'll be right back, and uh, we'll wrap things up right after this. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. This is the time of the show where we get to talk about one of our wonderful sponsors, Source Elements. Those are the creators of Source Connect. That is a software that voice acting pros are being demanded to have in their home studios by the commercial studios of the world. How do I know this? Well, I've set up software for everybody on every platform and in every scenario you can imagine. And this is the one that people are being requested to get. It's a standalone application, doesn't run on a Google Chrome browser. So you have a lot more stability involved. And this software has been tried and true, tested, improved the whole nine for well over 10 years now. So if you really wanna be establishing a business in voiceover that works with the top studios in the world, top agents, that kind of thing, make sure you have Source Connect locked and loaded in your studio. 
absolutely important. Go get a 15-day free trial at source-elements.com. 15-day free trial. You don't need an iLock little USB dongly thing to get set up with Source Connect standard right away. So go give it a try and tell them we sent you. We'll be right back right after this. Hey, it's time to talk about our good friend Harlan Hogan and Voice Over Essentials. And tonight, Voice Over Essentials announces a promo code to get a discount on their porta booths like this one here. Now, what with material, labor, and shipping cost increases, not to mention tariffs and the straw that broke the camel's back, a big hike in storage cost, they had to raise prices on the booths by eh, just a little bit. Just $10 on the Porta Booth Plus and $20 on the Porta Booth Pro. But our wonderful VOBS viewers can still get either of their booths for their original price for the next two weeks. You should go to, of course, voiceoveressentials.com. Easy to get there at the bottom of our page. Just click the picture of Harlan there and put either of their booths in their shopping cart and enter the promo code BOOTHS24 in the promo code field and click the submit promo code button. That'll get you $10 off the plus and $20 off for the pro. Get a Porta Booth now at the original price at voiceoveressentials.com. Thanks a lot, Harlan. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the voiceover body shop. All righty. And Ella is with us as she is with you all summer. Her last show of the summer. Ah, she heads back to Seattle on Saturday. Uh, we'll lucky you. you. Where it actually rains mm. every now and again. <laughs> uh, next week on this show, we will have a very special guest. I won't mention any names, but uh, it's we'll. A secret. It's 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 a secret. It is, <laughs> and uh, but we will reveal that when the time comes. Uh, who are our donors of the week? We've got Antland Productions. You read that one. Christy Burns. Michelle Blanker. Sarah Borges. Borges, yeah. Yeah. Philip Sapir. Trey. Trey Speaks. Trey Speaks. For you. For you. Trey yeah. Speaks for you. Read that one. Tom Pinto. And Patty Gibbons. Those are our donations, donors of the week. Who says our, our education system isn't teaching our kids to read? She's doing all right. All right. We get her to read once in a while. All right. Uh, hey, show us your booths. Uh, we've got uh, Tom Johnson's booth here. That's right. It's not his booth. It's, a, it's his closet. It's his closet booth. You know, I mean, you can this see his what clothes. a working voice actor booth actually looks like. You know, I'm, I'm actually setting up a closet uh, for a client, and it's like, well, look, you need a place to hang your clothes. It's a big walk-in closet. Hang the clothes. I'm saving myself all sorts of effort. Mm -hmm. So we got to go get a clothes bar for in there. <laughs> there it is. That's what it looks like. And yeah, now we know what he wears. Uh, <laughs> let's see what else. Uh, make sure if you want to work with George, you go over to George, the tech.com and Dan's available over at home voiceover studio.com. That's we'll get those in there. There we go. All right. And we, we caught her off guard. Yeah, that was yeah. rapid fire. All righty. Uh, let's see here. Uh, you want to be in our studio and watch the show live. Uh, we're here every other Monday, uh, doing the show live. And, uh, if you're in the greater Los Angeles area, join us. Because, as you can see, there's plenty of room. Yeah. Uh, and uh, write to us at the guys at VOBS.TV. And uh, if we're, we got space for you, like we do tonight, uh, come join us. You and can enjoy the vintage microphone and vintage radio collection. Yes, which is ever-growing. <laughs> the new Zenith AM-FM from 1950 that I found. Nothing is, says mid-century modern than 1950. 1950. And it's <laughs> handsome in the corner. And it there. sounds great. <laughs> I mean, I had to, had to lube it up a little bit and clean the, you know, the contacts and suddenly it came to life. Boom. Like, I didn't think yeah. it was going to work, but there it is. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors, of course. Uh, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. SourceElementsVOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. All right. It's like Almost Radio Lab. Good job. Oh. Collins. Collins. Yep. J. Michael. Nice job. All right. Those are our sponsors. Yes. And oh, Dan and the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live Webcasting. <laughs> and uh, of course, our, our, our in the chat room. Mike great, tonight, right? Mike Merlino did a fabulous yeah. job in the chat room. But even better than that is his mom, mm -hmm. uh, so Sue Merlino, here. who is our technical director, and she gets it all done. And we really appreciate that. Uh, well, that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, join us next week 
Got any questions for us? Send them to us at the guys at vobs.tv. Mm-hmm. As you can hear, we love answering your voiceover home studio questions. So, uh, yep, we do. We, we will do that for you. Uh, that's going to do it for us this week. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. I'm Ella Whittem. And this is voiceover. Body but, shop. Or VO. BS. And remember, if it sounds good, it is good. Take care, guys. Good night, everybody. Bye.